This is an interview with Mrs. Mabel Bovier, past president of the Lafayette Women's Club, formerly called the Lafayette Women's Forum. Mrs. Bovier, would you just say a word or two so we make sure that your voice comes in? Uh, well, I, I am I am very flattered to have this uh, tape our interview with uh, Mrs. Broadhead, and uh, I hope that I can give her some information about the old days, as I call. Let's. Mrs. Bobier, uh, would you like to tell us your first recollections of Lafayette? Yes, I would. And, uh, uh, do you want me to go ahead? Yes, please go right ahead. And when we arrived here in September of 1928, so this last September, we uh, celebrated 49 years in Lafayette. I think that's quite a long time I to live in a town. I should say. And I'm telling you right now that I am going to stay right here on the ranch if I possibly can because we just love it. It's home to us. We raised our four children here and uh, they are all settled in Walnut Creek. Not a one of them live in Lafayette. What was it like when you first came here in 1928? Well, that's what I always tell my new friends that I've made, that I am so glad that I came when Lafayette was a little village. We used to go down to do our shopping at uh, the one or the one of the two stores that was here, grocery stores, and right in the middle of uh, Mount yeah, well, we just make a U-turn and never get hit, or we didn't have to watch out too often for traffic coming. And uh, if uh, we were caught in the middle of doing that, why the people would stop and. <laughs> can let us continue on making our turn but there was no set rules we were on our own and got along fine uh, there was then you did your shopping then in Lafayette mostly did you go to Walnut Creek or did you go to Oakland yes too? Uh, we would go to Walnut Creek there was uh, a Safeway in Walnut Creek there weren't too many you know st uh, uh, what do you call them uh, stores like there are Safeway and Lucky's, but uh, this uh, this Safeway store came in and uh, we would go in there and trade. But uh, usually we, we we traded at McNeil's and uh, Starks and Starks, yes, store. down in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there I think there was another little a uh, grocery store up further. Uh, on Mount Diablo Boulevard, but that was just a, a little store. He didn't have much merchandise in there, and I can't think of his name, but he was there for quite a long time. And we just had one barber shop, and um, uh, it was very, very nice. How just a beautiful little town. <laughs> how did you happen to come to Lafayette in the first place, Mrs. Bobier? <clears throat> well, we um, we had relatives that um, moved out from Oakland to the little town of Saranap, and uh, he uh, they came to visit us. We lived in, in Petaluma at the time, and he was um, telling us about this uh, a rancher that was uh, selling out. He wanted to. Um, Move to a larger dairy ranch, and he he moved out, moved up to Point Reyes Station, and that was up on the coast. Yeah. And, um, and my husband was looking around for a small ranch, so we settled on what they called the Daily Ranch. Yes, we want to hear all about the Daily Ranch because it's a almost a landmark, you might yes, say, it it's been, and we'd like you to tell us about it. And, uh, <clears throat> and I think it consisted of uh, 
between 71 and 75 acres. It was a, quite a large place. And it, the old house that was down there it was real comfortable, and it was really a, a small ranch. And my husband bought cows, and we had um, chickens, and I raised turkeys, and uh, that was more fun. We had people, you know, come year after year after those turkeys at Thanksgiving and Christmas time. <laughs> and uh, they used to call me the turkey lady, yeah. Lafayette. And so um, <clears throat> that was, you see, 1928, just before the, the Depression. Yeah. And uh, it was um, it was kind of sad to see so many Lafayette families that lo the husbands had lost their jobs, and they were on uh, what they what we call welfare now. I don't know what to call it in those days. And uh, just a uh, hard time setting in for everyone. But with us, we had lots of eggs and milk and butter. And uh, then, of course, the cows had ca their calves. And my husband would butcher those calves. And uh, we had plenty of meat on the table. And lots, and it seems like every night we, when we sat down to dinner, rather there were two or three children, extra children, <laughs> but they were always welcome. And uh, to this day, my children often think of something funny that happened over there at the Daily Ranch. Your children were born at the Daily Ranch. No, they no. I had uh, my son after we arrived in Lafayette, and uh, he was born in Walnut Creek. Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, now uh, I have um, met several uh, children, you know, that used to come over there at the ranch and play with my children, and they would say, oh, I'll never forget that day, but it's the fun we had. And one one of these uh, boys says, has just moved back from the east. Who is that? Can you tell us? Uh, does it will be all right? Oh, yes. Well, oh. that's Austin Whitaker. Yes. And uh, he, he's, he's, he told me before he moved back east, I think this was at Mr. Stanley's uh, funeral. Yes. Uh, he came up to me and he said, I will never forget that day at ranch. And he said, you know, our children, they don't know what fun is. They have to, every everything they do, they have to be supervised. But we used to just go up there on those hills. <laughs> and he told me that there was an old rake, some, you know, those big hay rakes. This is you a ever farm, see? Yes, yeah, farm rake, equipment. Yeah. Big wheels, you know. And those kids would push that wheel up that up over those hills, and then let it come down. And that thing would get going so fast that you know how they jump up in the air. And he said, you know, as I got older, I was thinking, well, how dangerous that was. <laughs> he said the road was right down there. If there'd been anybody coming along there, but that thing would have killed. <laughs> Are you talking about the road? That meant that when you went to Lafayette from the Daly Ranch, how did, did tell us how you did go? Well, it's just where the entrance is right there where the, the where the uh, 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 Mexican restaurant is now. Mm -hmm. Yes, you had your own. Uh, there you, was you a gate there. It sort of wound around by the creek, did it? Where, where the restaurant stands now was our orchard, family mm -hmm. orchard. There was a, oh, there were a lot of nice fruit trees out there. Were they just for your own use, or did yes. you sell the... Oh, no, they, they were for your no, own No, they use. were for our own use. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, you went through this gate, and then down farther, there was another gate we had to go through, and that was into the big pasture, and then the, the uh, road just wound down around the creek there. How many cows did you have, Mrs. Bogan? Well, I think that... Uh, at one time, we had about 25. 
So you sold milk too then? Yes, uh, uh, during the, uh, just uh, sour milk. We separated the milk and sold the cream. Yeah. And uh, we shipped the cream by way of uh, the, the uh, nor uh, you know, the electric trains. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So you would take it down there take at the, the East uh, East Lafayette? Uh, yes, yes, where that uh, big uh, gra gravel layout Used was. To be. Did you yeah. ever? Yes, yeah. it was still there when Part we moved to Lafayette, city. but uh, now a gr uh, group, of, group of houses is yeah. in that section that, that's, there. That was taken away years ago. And uh, that's where we shipped the cream. And uh, you see, there was other ranchers around up there in Happy Valley. Uh, there was a family by the name of Alexander, and um, you took off uh, of the uh, Upper Happy Valley. It was just uh, this side of Phyllis's old home. Phyllis Peterson's uh -huh. home, yeah. Yeah. And he had a big ranch. I don't know, there was lots of acres up there. He must have had 50 or 55 acres, and he had a big dairy. And then there was another dairy up on off of St. Mary's Road, and um, there it was a he was owned by a Portuguese family. Now, I can't think of their names. I'll try and get the name so we can insert it here, uh, uh, because um, that may be one of the families we'd like to interview later on. You know, I, well. I think the mother and father are both dead, but the children, the children. had a mm -hmm. raft of children, and they're around this part of the country, yeah. I know. Well, maybe Phyllis Peterson can help she us get to tell you. Names. She'd know yeah. all about them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want us to go away uh, from, to another subject before we get, we t you tell us more about the Daily House. Would you like to describe it when you lived there? Yes. This would be the end of the 1920s and the 1930s, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yes. You were, well, it was a, a, a two-story house. There were uh, two nice bedrooms upstairs, and um, a bedroom, two bedrooms downstairs, and a living room, and a kitchen. And they didn't, we didn't, uh, and a big back porch, practically. We'd uh, eat out there, you know, in the summertime, and it was right alongside of the creek. And that uh, <clears throat> the creek uh, used to get pretty high in the wintertime, just almost run over the banks. But I want to tell you before, before I forget about the little bridge that was I'd like to hear that. There. Oh, yes. Did, yes. did Phyllis say I've, something about No, that? but I've heard about this little footbridge. Little the, footbridge, yes. yes. Tell us about it that. Was, uh, it was. Uh, on wires, you know, and hung on these from tree to tree with these cables. And uh, of course, the children had to walk across that bridge to go to catch a train and to go to school and go to Lafayette that way. If they, if we didn't take them in the car. Now, you, when you mean to school, you mean to high school. They would go yeah, they catch way. the train. Yeah, well, they, when they went to grammar school, they walked to grammar school. Yes. And also to when they had, they walked over to East to Lafayette to catch that train to go to, to Concord. Yes. But uh, the the winter that we moved over here on this uh, Bunning place. This oh, this is called what? Hmm? What place? Bunting. The Bunting. We bought them. We bought this place from a family with the name of Bunting. B U N. B U N T I N G. Yes. And she was a wonderful woman. She was very, very active in the forum. I think she uh, was a president at one time. But uh, she, she was very active in all in what few organizations that they had here in town at that time. But that winter, which uh, winter is this? And uh, that was in January, of '41, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a terrific storm. And then that creek came up, and and that little bridge washed away. But the, the reason it did wash away was there was a big tree further on up the creek, 
had fallen down, you know, gave way. The bank was so wet, I suppose. That tree fell down. Well, when it hit the water, well, it wouldn't go under that bridge. And of course, how, it, you know, that just that working the water pressing on that tree was what caused the bridge to go. The wires broke, I guess. Oh, I imagine so, the children were terribly unhappy. That meant that if they wanted to go to school, that meant they'd have to go clear over to Mount Diablo and then all the way around. With well, they would, the children walked across the After across the bridge the, came. Oh, so well, they, yes, yes. Well, I usually had to take them to, you know, because that had been too far to go. And the creek was, uh, the bank was so deep, you know, it was hard to, uh, to get on in there and get back up. So, uh, do you remember some of the uh, teachers that um, that uh, taught your children down in Boston? Well, of course, Mrs. Christian, she was one, Clara Christian, and uh, Lillian Bertha, and Mabel Burke, and uh, one of the Weldon girls now. You know that Weldon, you've heard of the Weldon family, haven't you, that was here for years? I've heard that. And uh, they, their, their home was up there where the Tunnel Inn is. And they owned quite a few acres in there. Mm -hmm. And of course it extended up on Lower Happy Valley Road. And they had bees and always had honey for sale. And uh, one of the girls taught school. And I think that's about all. Well, that's quite a few. We'll oh, Mrs. Gates. Gates. Olive Gates. My G -A -T -E -S. goodness. G-A-T-E-S. Uh -huh. she, um, she was a seventh, seventh grade teacher. Now, these are, what's, where was the school that you're talking about now? Oh, down there where it is now, the pro you know, well, Lafayette, the church, I call yes. the proper. Yes, right across Lafayette from. Lafayette proper. Yes, mm -hmm. right across yeah. from the church and where the, where the right Lafayette right school is now. Opposite the town hall, you know, yes, alongside yeah, the right town hall. Right next to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, we have... Um, there is um, the Soares family up in Happy Valley. Their children went to school with your children? Yes. And uh, then the Whitakers. And, uh, Was that Shirley, Nida? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chris Ellis, and then Bella Ellis. Peterson. And uh, the Stanley children. I'm just trying to think of the old, older you know, the older families that were here that are, let me see, and, uh, Bill, would you like to tell us perhaps about some of the activities uh, that went on in Lafayette while, while your children were growing up? Um, did you, at that time, belong to the Women's Forum? Mm -hmm. You were going to tell us a little bit about the uh, Women's Forum. Would, maybe this would be a good time to talk about it while we're talking about activities. Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, the organization? <clears throat> well, yes. I. Um, it says here that... Shall I read it? Yes, go right ahead. Uh, the club, this is a Lafayette Women's Club uh, uh, roster that I'm reading from. And it says the club was first organized as the Lafayette Women's Forum, August uh, uh, August 8, 1936. Now that was when the forum originated yeah. in 1936. And uh, I have a list here of all the past presidents of the forum. If you want to, yes. Do, why don't you give us some of that? Uh, first, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. E. F. Zinke was the first president, and she has uh, served from 1936 to 1937, just one year. Next, Mrs. G. B. Sturgeon and Mrs. Claire Hamilton, 
Mrs. D. O. Powell, Mrs. H. M. Smitten, Mrs. R. K. No, it's K. R. Pape. Now she's still here, still alive. All these women are have passed on. Mrs. F. E. Vollmer, Mrs. J. M. Burke, Mrs. D. R. Court, Mrs. A. B. Hood, Mrs. B. D. Blackwood, Mrs. L. I. McKim, Mrs. Ernest H. Hassey, and Mrs. R. H. Lockie. Yeah. And when did it become a Lafayette Women's Club? Now, we'll have to go over here. Federated, uh, Federated February 1956. That's what mm -hmm. it says here. Yes. Now, would that mean uh, when it was uh, organized, when the name was changed from a form to the to the women's club, I guess. I think so. We can look that up mm -hmm. if that's not so. Uh, I realize you were a uh, president of the women's club. What year was that, Mrs. Uh, Bobier? Well, now let me see. <clears throat> the first uh, time would be um, 1964 to 1965. What, did, uh, what were some of the things you tried to accomplish that year as president of the women's club? Uh, Lafayette Women's Club. Well, I don't know whether we did uh, too much for Lafayette, but uh, we always uh, uh, we helped uh, a lot in the design project. We gave them money, you know, to uh, and we maintained that little plaza park. That was our, one of our projects. And uh, that was about the only thing that we did. Did you go out and uh, did the women go out and work in the uh, um, in the Plaza Park l like the uh, Garden Club does now? Absolutely. Well, tell us what what you did. What were some of the projects? Well, uh, that for one was uh, was taking care of, of the uh, the pla the little park. But <clears throat> I will have to say that we didn't do too much because uh, the, the, the design project hired some man from the county uh, to come in and do the hard work. But it was super. He, that his work and the planning was supervised by um, the women of the club, and one woman was was Ruth Bacon, who lives up in Happy Valley now, and she, I mentioned her name because she just took such a terrible interest in it. She just loved that little park. And she would go down there and, and uh, tell this man uh, how to plant them, what to plant, and, uh, you know, just kept her eye on <laughs> But she did a good job. And she did a good job. That's how it's done. <laughs> that it is. And then, but I, I want to go back and tell and ask you if anybody ever mentioned to you that we used to have what we called uh, the garden club many years ago. No, tell me. Now this is part of the women's club. No, it isn't. No, oh, it was tell just, me. All right. As I told you, there was very few organiza organizations. Yes. <laughs> organizations, yes, that's all right. Organizations here in Lafayette at the time. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, women didn't belong to the forum even. And uh, so uh, there was a, a group of us decided, well, uh, we, we ought to start some kind of a club so we can all get together once a month. So we did. And it was called the Garden Club. And, uh, and Dolly McNeil was the first president. And she, her name is Coleman now, Dolly Coleman. Yes. And do you know where she I lives? Yes, I do. Yes, yes and uh -huh. down off the pl on Plaza Park. And so um, she, uh, this was really a nice uh, little club, and we had lots of fun. 
but it was just uh, more her sociability, you know, yes. and uh, but it was a place to meet and to see each other, and uh, we didn't uh, go into making any money to speak of, but um, we had a, a, a secretary and a treasurer, <laughs> and. Uh, Mrs. Stanley was one, one secretary, and I had, had an office. I don't know whether it was a treasurer or not, but when I speak of a treasurer, I don't know what why we had to have one. Well, we had to pay the dues. Anyhow, we paid dues. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and maybe uh, I am forgetting something that uh, we have done, but I, I right now I can't think it of was more of a social more yeah. to get together. And, on play cards, that was it. We played whist, <laughs> and we uh, every once in a while we'd have a uh, a party and invite people to come outside of the membership. But we had a real nice time. But I was going to tell you that uh, <clears throat> that little plaza was nothing but a weed patch for a long time. And uh, now, um, if anyone of any importance passed away, why, uh, they would uh, get together and figure out, well, now, should he have a, should we get a plaque and put in that plaza? Now, Dr. Leach in Walnut Creek, that was, a, was about the only doctor in Walnut Creek when we came here, delivered lots of babies around in Lafayette. In fact, he delivered my son. And um, when he passed away, why, this club put a little plaque in there with his name on it and the date he died. Now, I... I Who is it now? I don't know. Now, and that I, would be interesting to find and out. I just wonder. Maybe uh, we could find out. Maybe we could find yeah, out. I, I don't know. That would, that would be something worthwhile to find out. Now, the first uh, uh, soldier who was killed in the world in World War One was uh, had a plaque put in there, and he was from an Italian family up in Happy Valley, I believe. So and that, that there would was be a plaque there too and, uh, for a plaque for him. Well, I wonder um, what could have happened. Well, I don't know. I just probably wondered. moved someplace when the plaza I was uh, became I, um, <coughs> cultivated and that's right. planted trees and flowers. And uh, then uh, we thought it looked so bad that, uh, that most every one of us that belonged to that club went down there one spring and we planted the whole thing in petunias. And that was a gorgeous sight, I tell exactly. you. It was really beautiful. Well, people would drive out from Oakland to see that big patch of petunias. And uh, I guess uh, Dolly would go over and water it, the patch, and, and uh, they bloomed all summer long. It was just a really a pretty, it was so much better than it was. And those plaques were in there then. I was just wondering about what if we asked Jack Hagman if he might know something about that. He might well. Because he used to he put up the flag. Does he yes, still he do very that? I don't know, but I know he was always very interested in civic affairs. He might know something about that, but I would, it would just, you know, a lot of people probably has forgotten about that, but I know I was there when we had a a kind of a little gathering when we put that plaque there for Dr. Leach. And um, I think the minister from the church came over at that time and said a prayer or did something nice. Mm -hmm. What year was this about? Do you remember? Well, I just, uh, that would, that would still have to be in the 30s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a little while ago, Mrs. Bobier, you talked about the importance of the Lafayette Design Project, and they really were a very important uh, organization. They were, did they start in the 50s? 
Could you tell us a, a, what you remember about that oh, and their influence? Well, now, I, I can't uh, tell you too much about that. <clears throat> I know that um, when I was a, a, the president of the club the first time, or was it the second time, well, you know, they, uh, everybody from, uh, from the different organiza organizations were uh, represented at their meetings. And uh, then we also had a representative from the club go and hear what was going on and come back and tell us what took place and what their needs were and so forth and so on. But, um, they, you know, they planted trees in Lafayette and uh, I, they, they took on a, a, a putting up signs, I think, too. That would be one of their projects. And um, uh, you'll have to have They were interested in beautifying Lafayette, as I recall, it. before uh -huh. we became a city. And um, one time, uh, I think it was during the, my term of office in the parents club, one of our, one of our members, uh, Brought the brought the idea up to us that uh, we ought to um, uh, kind of uh, put in some plants and uh, uh, fix up a little plot coming in. Uh, you know, uh, as you go up past the dam, that road that would be Mount Diablo Boulevard. Yes, still, still Mount Diablo. Well. Now where where the where there's a where the stop signs are that go up into um, Akalani's Valley. Well, there used to be a um, piece of land. I, I I guess it was owned by the state, but it was always covered with weeds and stickers and everything under the sun. Tin cans were thrown in there, and just a regular rubbish pile. And uh, so Marianne Keithley. How do you, who is Marianne? Marianne Keithley. Yes. I brought uh, up the subject of why don't we get up there and do something about that. So she took it upon herself to take care of that. And so she planted a little plot in there, put flowers in and some shrubs. I guess the, the club must have bought these for her. And she had that fixed up real nice. Well, that was before the lights went in there. Of course, that's all gone now. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, that was what we wanted to do, to help beautify Lafayette. And another thing, too, while I'm on this subject, we also had someone build some uh, flower boxes on that old town hall in front of it, where the plays were. And we planted flowers in, in, in these boxes. And uh, it made the hall look a little better, the entrance. I believe we have photographs of, uh, of the boxes in front of the, in front of town hall. Uh -huh. So you were interested in beautifying yeah, we, uh, all over That was some of our, our work. Our, that, that's the women's club now. This, this wasn't yes. the old garden club. But um, now that, uh, the garden club, the first garden club, we were very proud of that, and uh, our parties were real nice and everything. And uh, getting back to Mrs. Powell, she would get up and uh, at the at the forum meetings and tell about when she first arrived here in Lafayette. She said there wasn't a thing. Not an organization, not a woman's organization that she could uh, go to and uh, uh, feel like she belonged to some club. Well, it always hurt our feelings, you know, which <laughs> they thought that there was a thing that the women didn't have any any aspirations to get up and get something started. And here we had that, every woman, I guess, that could belong to the thing. But uh, I guess um, she, uh, it was going, I, I remember when Mrs. Powell came, she and her husband, 
He had a real estate office up there on Mount Diablo Boulevard. And um, so um, I, I met her right away and we used to, she used, she was always lonesome. She was always lonesome. They lived in Sebastopol and she had to leave her friends up there and then um, come down here and she was very lonesome. But um, uh, that kind of burnt everybody up when, they, when she said there wasn't a woman's organization, <laughs> of course, <laughs> here in town. That was our only one, though. But we'd meet in everybody, you know, different homes and always have a nice tea. And there must have been uh, 30 women attend those meetings. And uh, I don't know what the president talked about. There wasn't much business, but she always presided at our meetings. About how many, uh, what was the population then about that time? Oh, I've just forgotten entirely. Well, I think you had a pretty good representation if you had 30 women coming well, to, yes. the, to the Well, there was club. quite a few people living in Lafayette and, the, you know, the surrounding country. And uh, I know that uh, when Mr. Ellis uh, came and uh, took over the job of being principal, he used to have something, uh, have a little chart out in the, in the entryway. And uh, he would uh, tell about how, well, you know, when the people began to move in, the attendance at school, he'd always have, you could always tell how the attendance had uh, had uh, sprung up, you know, he'd draw that, and that was kind of interesting to watch, but that didn't have anything to do with the population. Now, he was a teacher before he became principal, wasn't he? No, he uh, he came in as a principal. Came in as a principal, yes. Mrs. Christian was the principal for years. She was a, was was a principal when we arrived here, and uh, she had been principal for quite a number of years before we came. And uh, <clears throat> then, uh, as the school got larger and she got older, why the trustees thought that uh, it was time to make a change. So um, they, uh, it, was, it, was quite a, it was quite a shock to everyone when they made their announcement that they were going to make a change there at the school because Mrs. Christian was loved by every family in, in town and uh, well they just, they just had, they just thought it was terrible that they would pick her out of that job. But uh, their intention was to keep her on teaching, of course. Well, uh, they had a big meeting down at the ta town hall uh, against the trustees. And my, that was a heated argument, I'll tell you. They got up there and they just told what was on their mind. They were not going to have those trustees railroad Mrs. Christian out of that school position. But they didn't pay any attention. They just went right ahead and they got this young man, Mr. Ellis. Well, it just turned out to be a beautiful thing because Mr. Ellis was well liked by everybody too. And he was a man that, um, he, was a, he was a right man for anything like this. He's cruel headed, you know. And he just came in there and took over and he, told me one day, he said, uh, it was pretty hard. Mrs. Christian would, wouldn't speak to him, you know, and just wouldn't cooperate with him. And I think that uh, she was demoted down to, if that's a word you want to use, to the fourth grade. Well, that was quite a drop, you know, from being principal. But she wanted to hang on and um, she got over it finally, he said, and he was just as calm about it. And uh, he said that, uh, you know, as the years went by, right, they were the best of friends. And he thought an awful lot of her. And I guess she did of him. She, you yes. know, that she got over the hurt of yes. him taking her out of her job there. But you know, it was better. It, it turned out good. 
Yeah. He was a fine man for that school. Mrs. Mobile, while we're having our tea, which looks absolutely lovely, uh, tell us about um, what, how did you decide to leave the Daly Ranch and to move up to um, your ranch here? To the budding place. Yes. Well, um, uh, this, uh, we lived uh, down on the Daly Ranch for about 13 years. And um, the woman uh, who owned the ranch, Mr. Daly, she was living at, at the time of her death with the, her daughter um, in Lafayette. And, uh, you know, Katrina. Mrs. Thompson, whose husband ran the blacksmith shop. Oh, that Thompson. Yeah, that yes. Thompson. And uh, she um, lived to be away in her 80s. And as long as she lived, why well, they, uh, you know, kept the place there. But after she passed on, why well, then, you know, they had to sell it to divide the uh, um, um, ranch up between the ears. And so um, they were going to sell a place, and they offered it to us for seventy thousand dollars. And I, I forgot sixty-nine or seventy acres. Sixty or seventy acres. But by goodness, it, we didn't have the money in those days raising the family and putting the girls through school and everything. You just didn't have the money. But what a wonderful! Well, opportunities, and if you did have them, that was a very small price. And um, so this uh, this place was for sale. Mr. and Mrs. Bunting uh, didn't like it because they had a son who was retarded. And after the high school got was built, In 1940. for some reason or other, they that it bothered them. I, I don't know why, but they wanted to get Jay, that was the name of the boy, out of this country entirely. What if they were afraid he might go down there and get into trouble? I don't know. But uh, anyway, they, they wanted to move out, and she and I are very close friends. Uh, we, uh, she, didn't have, she didn't drive, so I would come and get her, and we'd go to the farm and different places. So when they decided to, to sell out why she uh, she came over and, and told me that she would love to have us buy the place. She liked it so well she just wanted to get somebody she knew real well in here.